This right here is a very interesting microphone that I knew nothing about prior to like a month and a half ago. This is the Sheps CMIT or CMIT 5U. So let's spend some time today to see if the 5U is for you. And before we get started, I should be very clear that this video is not sponsored. B&H let me borrow this microphone for about a month and a half. And as soon as I'm done making this video, then I'm going to send it back to them so I don't get to keep this. And honestly, it was kind of funny because let's switch over actually. Now you're listening to the Sennheiser MKH-50, which is my personal microphone that I've been using as my main out of frame boom microphone since late 2021 and I absolutely love this microphone and recently I did a video where I compared that against this which is the Sennheiser MKH416. So let's switch over to the 416 because I did ask them if I could borrow this microphone to make that comparison and when they sent it out they also said hey would you like us to send another microphone that we think you'll really like and I said sure I would love to see some microphone that I'm not familiar with and that's when this wooden box showed up and when I opened it in this very nice foam was this amazing Sheps Cement 5U microphone right here, which I was completely unfamiliar with. And it's almost like, well, back here, there's a little silver microphone. That's the Earthworks Icon. I was very late to the game with Earthworks because I had never heard of them. And maybe like a year and a half ago when I got that microphone and discovered Earthworks and realized, oh, they're like a very well-regarded, highly respected microphone company that's been around for a really long time. Kind of the same thing happened here. I knew nothing about this microphone, and now that I've been using it for, I guess, about the past six weeks, and I've been learning more about it and its history, I've come to realize, oh, it's a very high quality, highly regarded, very well-known microphone within like the television and film industries. And now we're back on the 5U, and of course, as you can probably tell by the design, this is really not made to be a microphone that's inches away from your face, like a voiceover microphone. It's not the SM7B or something along those lines. This is intended to be put on a boom, out of frame, away from the source of sound, but I'm just doing this right now so you can see the microphone and hear some of its qualities. And then we will test it out and compare it in all different situations. But let me tell you a little bit about this microphone. I'm going to just go straight to the source here. From Sheps themselves, they describe it as an excellent all around boom mic for indoor and outdoor applications, Highly regarded for film, TV, and location recording, the CMIT 5 offers customizable tone and predictable directionality even when rotated. So if I rotate the microphone, you can kind of hear the sound doesn't really change at all. And in terms of directionality, it is a super cardioid pickup pattern, so it is a bit more directional. If I go off axis a little bit, you can hear my voice disappears pretty quickly. And of course, if I turn the microphone, my voice totally changes by behind the microphone. It's just completely bizarre. And then kind of right here, that is very different from the 416, which does have a wider pickup pattern. I can go, as I showed in my other comparison, I can go a little more off axis without my voice totally changing. And I can move the microphone a little bit without it changing. But if I do turn this microphone, it does slightly change the tone that you're getting. It sort of picks up sound in a different way. And of course, a big reason that B&H thought I would like this microphone is because it's blue. And as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh, this is such a really cool thing. You never see cool colored microphones. They also make a black version and a bright green version, which then I realized it's not blue because it looks cool. It's blue because you could use it on a blue screen and the green one is so you could use it with the green screen and it makes it easier to use the microphones when you need to also do visual effects or something because they are intended for you know television film production. But it also looks amazing. This is a $2,400 microphone. I do not have the budget for a $2,400 microphone. This is by far the most expensive microphone I've ever used, which up until now has been the MKH-50, which is a $1,200 microphone. This is twice the cost of the MKH-50. And so the point of this video is not to tell you go out and spend $2,400 on a microphone. If you got the budget, for sure, go for it. If I had unlimited money, I would buy this and I would buy the blue one, even if I never used a blue screen, because it looks friggin' cool and it sounds great. That's really... The biggest thing to listen to with this microphone is how it sounds. As I've said many times before, regardless of price, when it comes to microphones, it's very important to just pay attention to how they sound. So let's talk about that a little bit because there's some cool things that this microphone does, and then we'll compare it to others of all different price ranges. So we did a little bit of the directionality. You can kind of hear how it picks up and rejects off axis sound. Let's also now talk about some plosives. It does come with this matching colored windscreen. There's a blue, a green, or a black one, depending on the color of the microphone that you get. So Peter Piper pitched a podcast. That's uh, there's still some plosives getting through there. If I go to the 416, Peter Piper pitched a podcast. P -p -p they're pretty similar. Peter Piper, Peter Piper. 
they're they're actually pretty similar. What I was really impressed with the 416 when I did my last comparison was even without the windscreen, this is now the 416, Peter Piper pitched a podcast. It's almost the same without the windscreen. This, I think when you put it on, just sort of like tames some of those higher end frequencies. And now this is the 416 with the windscreen. I think this does round out the sound a little bit. But then going back to the 5U, Peter Piper pitched a podcast. <laughs> Peter Piper pitched a podcast. So in this case, you can kind of hear that sounded very strange. The windscreen does a lot of good, but of course, this microphone is probably not going to be used this close to a sound source typically. So I wouldn't really worry about those plosives that much because it's going to be at least out of frame, you know, away from the sound source where it's not gonna be hit by those wind things. But what's also very cool, there are some nifty little buttons up here. And so you can see that there are three buttons and three green lights. On the case of the cement, the green lights mean that those filters are not active. When you activate one, the light turns red. So let's see what these filters are and what they do and then try them out in all kinds of different combinations. So I'm just reading directly from the instruction manual because I don't want to mess any of this up. Basically you have two low roll off filters. One of them is a very steep low end roll off and the other is a more gentle low end. So it depends on how much you want to get rid of low end noise, rumbling. And then the third one is a high frequency emphasis which according to Sheps says that it is to compensate for high frequency loss caused by windscreens and enhances speech intelligibility. So it makes you sound smarter. <laughs> it makes you sound a little bit clearer because as we saw with the 416, when you add a windscreen, especially if I were to not use this one, but maybe use a dead cat or something bigger and bulkier, it will change the tone of the microphone, oftentimes removing some of the high frequencies. And so that filter is intended to return some of those high frequencies. So let's just play around with these a little bit. Right now, none of them are engaged. So let's start with the steep low end roll off. So this is without that, this is just my normal voice. And now we should notice that there are significantly less, there is significantly less low end in my voice that kind of just disappeared there. So if there were wind or something, this would help eliminate that sound. Let's turn that back off. Now this is with the filter and this is without the filter. This is just the neutral sound. Should also mention this microphone is running into the Rodecaster Pro 2 with no effects, no processing, it's just a generic dry signal. And now let's do the more gentle low end roll off. So this is without that filter. And now this is with that filter. This sounds pretty neutral. It is significantly more gentle than the other one was. Let's turn that off. And now let's do the high emphasis. So this will then push up some of those high frequencies again. So this is without that. And this is with that. It kind of, this almost sounds more like the 416. So this is the 5U. And now this is the 416. They sound a lot more similar when I have that one engaged. The 416, oh my God, this is not the 416. So here's the thing. What I could do at this point in time <laughs> is just redo this entire video, but I'm not going to <laughs> because I think this is actually kind of cool. I completely made a mistake. This is the Deity S Mic 2. So the reason that I'm not going to redo that is because every time I've been calling this the 416, it's actually not been that $1,000 microphone. It's been a $350 microphone, the Deity S Mic 2. I'm just going to leave this in because it just maybe shows how biased we are because I legit thought this was the 416 the whole time. Let me go get the actual 416. And now I will replace that with the Sennheiser. So just for the sake of clarity, this right here is the MKH-50. This is a $1,200 microphone. It's positioned out of frame, so it's not as close to me. But I guess if I get kind of close to it, you can hear what that would sound like. This is the Sennheiser MKH-416. This is a $1,000 microphone. These two sound significantly different. And this is the Sheps Cmit 5U with none of the filters engaged. Now we kind of have that frame of reference. Going back to the 416 real quick, you can kind of hear the same pickup pattern as the S Mic 2. I can get a little bit more off axis. I guess this, if anything, really shows you that the S Mic 2 is a great alternative, a more budget friendly alternative to the 416 perhaps. That's kind of cool. And if I turn the 416 away, obviously then the sound disappears. And if I rotate the 416, it does sort of change the way that it picks up sound a little bit. It's very subtle, but it is there. I'm actually, it's kind of actually makes me more excited about the S mic. I kind of didn't give it the credit it deserved, I guess. Anyway, this is the 416. Now, again, talking about those plosives, because I even took the freaking windscreen off and didn't notice, but Peter Piper pitched a podcast. This really does a great job at rejecting plosives. We were over here on the CMIT and I had turned on the high 
frequency filter so that way it boosts up some of those high frequencies and I said wow now it sounds a lot more like the 416 so this is the CMIT with the high frequency compensation filter enabled and this is the Sennheiser 416 so again Sennheiser 416 this has no switches no filters nothing it just is this microphone this is what it sounds like and this is the CMIT dialed in I guess as close as I could get it to sound like the Sennheiser. Maybe if I turned off the low end, it would actually sound a little more like the 416. So this is now with the high frequency compensation turned on and the more aggressive low cut filter. And now I think that the CMIT 5U sounds really similar to the Sennheiser MKH 416. However, personally, I prefer the natural sound of the CMIT compared to the 416. I really like this kind of more full, rich sound. I don't know why you would have both low filters turned on at the same time, but this is what that sounds like. And if I then also turn on the high frequency compensation, this is basically as like smashed and compressed and defrequencied as this microphone can get. There we go. This is the microphone with none of its filters turned on, just straight out of the box. The cool thing with that is it does add a lot of versatility. The way you can mix and match those filters, if you think of this as a microphone that's intended to be taken places, used in different applications, on different locations, you kind of know that it can handle almost anything that you throw at it, and that is really, really great. This is a, a completely bizarre comparison, but this is the Shure SM7B. This is a $400 dynamic microphone, but the reason I'm sharing that is because this is designed to be right in front of your face, right in front of the sound source as you talk, and I love the way that this microphone sounds. And now this is the CMIT 5U. I feel like this has a pretty comparable tone to the SM7B. Of course, the big difference being that this microphone is intended actually here. Let's put this out of frame. So now I have positioned the CMIT 5U on this boom out of frame. And this is interesting because this is really kind of more how this microphone is intended to sound. And I still think that it sounds pretty darn good, pretty darn rich and full. And again, just for fun, let's compare that to the SM7B, which is right in front of my face to get this high quality sound. The microphone has to be right here. If you put this as a boom out of frame, it sounds bad but if you put it really close to you, it sounds really great. And then we go back over to the CMIT, and I think you're hearing a lot of that high quality sound, even though the microphone's not close to me. But here's what's even more interesting, and what I have found fascinating about this, is this is the $2,400 CMIT 5U, and this is the $1,200 Sennheiser MKH50. This is my personal microphone of choice, which prior to using the Sheps was the most expensive microphone that I had ever used, but it's been so worth it because I absolutely love the way that the MKH50 sounds. And as I said in my comparison with the 416, a more expensive microphone doesn't necessarily guarantee a better microphone, but there are a lot of things in terms of quality that do tend to be tied to price at least a bit. I think, you know, the difference between a $25 microphone and a $200 microphone is gonna be pretty mind blowing. But then there's that diminishing return where the difference between a $200 microphone and an $800 microphone might not be as noticeable. The difference between $1,200, $2,400 is pretty subtle because again, this is the MKH50 and this is the CMIT 5U, a twice as expensive microphone. And what I have found really fascinating is how similar I think that the Sheps and the MKH50 sound to one another. I think they sound pretty darn close. I do think that this microphone, the CMIT 5U, personally, I think that it has a bit more of a full rich sound. And then the MKH50 I think is very, very, very close, but it's slightly, I don't know, full or rich, it sounds like I'm talking about like coffee or wine or something, but hopefully you won't hear me whining because both of these I think sound absolutely excellent. Now, let's take things a little bit further here. Let's take the MKH416. I'm sort of running out of mounts here, so I'm just gonna hold this here. This is the CMIT 5U, and now this is the MKH416 in that same location. And the 416 is a great overhead microphone, it's a great boom microphone, but from what I've noticed, compared especially to the MKH50 and the 5U, it doesn't isolate sound quite as much. You hear a little bit more of the room reverb, I think, with the 416, but the 416 also really excels when you use it outdoors and wind and stuff like that. And now we're back on the CMET 5U. Let's go over to this microphone here. The reason I had this was because now I wanted to talk about the $350 Deity S Mic 2 because right now I think that this sounds really, really good. I don't think that it sounds quite at the same level as the other microphones, but for a fraction of the price, can you live with that? Maybe. 
The problem I personally have with the s mic 2 is when you then position it out of frame, now I'm being my own boom operator and holding it basically where the other microphones are. So this is the Deity s mic 2 and just for good measure, this is the Sennheiser MKH-50 at that distance, and this is the Deity s mic 2 What I have noticed is that Personally, this is just my opinion, when this microphone is close to the sound source, I think that it sounds fantastic. But when it comes to spoken word and the microphone is positioned further away, at least to my ears, maybe with my voice, it doesn't seem like it pulls out the voice as much from the other environmental sound. Everything kind of just seems to sort of blend in. And I suppose you could equalize that and change it and adapt it. And I know many people get amazing results with this microphone, but going back to what I said about price, what I've noticed is as you get into higher end microphones that become more specialized, and I did mention this in my 416 versus MKH50 video, they do start to make it easier to get those really good results. So it's not that you can't get great results with a really inexpensive microphone, it's just that sometimes higher end microphones make it easier and are more reliable when it comes to consistently getting those results. And that, right now we're on the MKH50, that's why I've been loving this microphone so much is because I've just come to rely on it. If this microphone ever doesn't sound good, 100% it's my fault. Like, I know this is an amazing microphone, and if it's sounding bad, it's user error, which pretty much goes for anything on my channel. Like, everything I'm using is great, so if you don't like the way it sounds, I messed up. Everything we've looked at so far is an XLR shotgun microphone, so that means you need an XLR interface or your camera needs to have something like my FX3 that lets you connect XLR microphones. They don't have battery compartments, so they all run on phantom power, and of course, Basically any audio interface or even camera interface that accepts XLR will be able to provide that 48 volts of phantom power. However, why not take a look at a $199 microphone, which is this one right here, the Rode VideoMic NTG. This is an entirely different situation. The VideoMic NTG was my main microphone in studio for a couple of years before I got the MKH-50, and I was overall very happy with the results. I do think that it kind of like the 416, it picks up a little bit more of the room tone, but for a $199 microphone that plugs straight into your camera, it's not an XLR microphone, it is that 3.5 millimeter output, and it does have a few filters built into it in addition to a gain dial, so you can just reach on the back of the microphone and change the gain, which whenever you're using a microphone like that with your camera, it's always a good idea to just keep your camera's gain as low as possible. In this case, my A7S III, which is where the NTG is running into, the gain is set to four, which is pretty low, and then the NTG is set to nine, or nine and a half and 10. So if you're somebody who works on video a lot, especially as like an independent or a solo creator, a microphone like the NTG is probably going to be one of your first, forced, first, but not worst, choices because they're, it's really affordable, it's super versatile, it also functions as a USB-C microphone, and it comes with a shock mount. It does have a built-in battery, so you always have to remember to charge it, but the battery lasts many, many hours in between charges. So it's a really terrific microphone, and this is what it sounds like in a out of frame boomed situation. So now let's go from the VideoMic NTG back over to the CMIT 5U. So this is now a $2,400 XLR microphone, the CMIT 5U, and this is a $200 video microphone that just plugs into the microphone jack on your camera. If you're just listening to this on your phone, like on the subway or something, which please don't listen to things loudly in public because that's always annoying. But if you're listening to this on like small phone speakers, you might not notice a big difference. If you're listening to this on like your home sound system or a nice pair of headphones, you'll probably notice a lot more of these subtleties and I'm not processing or changing any of the audio on any of these clips. So once again, this is the CMIT 5U, a $2,400 microphone, and this is the VideoMic NTG, a $200 microphone. They lowered the price a while ago, it used to be 250, and now it's down to $200, which I think is an absolutely amazing deal for this microphone. And just for good measure, this is the Sennheiser MK. MKH50 compared to the NTG, this is the MKH50, this is the CMIT 5U, is it the Mic 4U, this is the MKH50, the Nifty 50, and this is the video mic NTG because NTG whiz, it's a great sounding microphone. And why not? Let's go crazy. This is the video mic NTG, and now this is the Deity S Mic 2 compared to the video mic NTG. This is a $350 microphone, and just for fun, this is the Sennheiser MKH416. So this is the MKH416. This is the CMIT 5U. This is now the MKH50, and this is the video mic NTG. So we're going all the way from $200 to $2,400 quite a range of microphones. So since this microphone is so fun to use and just so nice to look at, I'm going to put it back in frame here because it just sounds 
just so darn nice. And as soon as I'm done with this video, I then need to ship the Sheps back to B&H. So the, I have to ship it so that the delivery person can schlep the Sheps back to B&H. And so as is often the case with microphone review videos, what it always comes down to is your personal preference. It does not matter how much a microphone costs, what the brand name is on a microphone. If you like it and it works for you, that is the right microphone. But since I had the chance to try out this really high-end premium microphone, I thought it was definitely worth doing. And prior to this video, I've been using it on a lot of different streams and podcasts and videos over the past six weeks. So I've gotten to have a lot of fun with this microphone and it really is absolutely terrific. So if you have $2,400 and you're just like, I'll spend that on a microphone, you got this one right here and you could get a green one or you could get a black one if you wanted. But I do think what this illustrates is that sort of diminishing return. If you went online and you found a $30 shotgun microphone, it might work well, it might not work that well, but you're gonna notice a huge difference going from something like that to something like this, the VideoMic NTG, which this is a $200 microphone, it's going to sound significantly better in those situations. And this is what I used for a long time because I thought it sounded pretty darn good. And if we go over now to the MKH-50, which is my main microphone, as I've said a few times now, the difference in sound quality between the MKH-50 and now this, the VideoMic NTG, is pretty minor. But after using this microphone for several years, I started noticing all of the things I didn't like about it in this specific environment for my specific voice. So that's why when I got the 50, I really noticed all of these subtle changes that it made. I do like the sound, I think it sounds a little more full, but beyond that, the 50 is better at isolating my voice and being super directional, so that way, even though my space is not my space, hey, I'm Tom, and it's my space, but even though this space that I am in, my space, is not treated super well for audio, I've tried, but it's not perfect, the MKH-50 really compensates for that a lot because it is such a directional microphone. So then jumping up to another microphone that's twice that price, the CMIT 5U, is there a, another $1,200 difference between the MKH-50, this microphone right here, versus this microphone right here? It's kind of tough to say, but if you're somebody who uses these microphones a lot or you have specific use cases, that's where certain things like the microphone's natural tone might play a role. That's where the way the filters work on the different microphones might play a role. All kinds of things might affect your decision on what is best for you. And I just thought it'd be a really fun thing to explore and sort of check out this microphone today and share that with you. And speaking of things that are fun, thank you to everyone who helps support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. And if you want to know a little bit more about microphones, check out my comparison between the MKH-50 and the MKH-416. Or if you just love the 50 like I do, check out my full review right here.